Uh, welcome to our large audience again. We're here to uh, preview round six, and we're at the Warrigal Leisure Centre, Keith. Um, and we have a special guest from Warrigal today, Dean Hendricks, as Director of Coaching. And maybe, Dean, if I just get you to just tell us exactly what your role is at Warrigal, because we know Warrigal's been struggling a bit on field, but this year they've put some uh, things in place, and you know, hopefully it means they're heading in the right direction. Absolutely. Yes, uh, well, uh, as Director of Coaching and Senior Assistant Coach, obviously uh, um, working not just with uh, George as his assistant, but also with all the coaches and making sure our, our programs are consistent right across the board. So uh, the same um, sort of training drills, the same um, fitness programs, now obviously it, it alters uh, to the levels, but, and all the coaches, um, we make sure are on the same page as far as... Uh, what sort of things they're putting in place for as far as zones and stoppages and what we want to do when we've got the footy and when the opposition have got the footy and all that sort of stuff. Uh, as well as um, a, a communicating with the uh, junior um, league competition, the local uh, comp, the Warrigal District Junior Football League and our feeder clubs, um, what we regard as feeder clubs in the Blues, the Colts and uh, Warrigal. Yeah, there's been a strong um, attempt there to strengthen those ties, hasn't there? Uh, your club president told us at the club dinner on Sunday. Yes, there has. Um, we had a recent meeting and um, we've, we've got a program in place where the players are going out on a rotational basis. We've got a couple of players. Oh, I had training with uh, the Blues last week and we've got a couple of players going out to the Colts uh, tomorrow night yeah. and next week uh, they'll be at Warrenor and it will roll over in that way and we'll have the clubs also as special guests to our home game starting with our home game uh, at Terrell in, in a couple of weeks time we would likely to have the Blues Club come and the kids can have lunch and uh, come into the rooms and see our warm ups and George can possibly have a bit of a yak to them and, uh, and they can see the inner workings of the club on match day. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a pretty, it's pretty important that in developing that because uh, obviously with every club it is the future, the juniors are the future and I mean you, Warrigal has had two or three good years with junior players, bit of a void at the moment but yeah. obviously the club has made a really conscious effort to improve and make sure that their future is, you know, is well. Yeah, look, we realise that, that that has lapsed a bit and it reflects in um, the depth of numbers of our under-16s and 18s because we've got some really good kids in our 16s and 18s, a number who are playing senior football already. Um, but it's just a matter of um, building uh, the numbers and the depth of talent and, and having them um, learn in a professional but um, good, fun family environment. I might just hand you over to our investigative reporter, Keith. <laughs> He'll ask you some important yeah. qu probing questions, Keith. Uh, I don't know, I think, uh, I think what Dean said about what Warrior was trying to do with the development of the club, and we've certainly noticed it over the last couple of years, you know, uh, in a lot of off-field activities of Warrior, and this year they're taking it a, a step further. Um, you know, the performances on the field is where they've... Uh, uh, they've got to look to. Hopefully they might break the ice very shortly and get that important win because it uh, would be really great for the confidence of the club and the atmosphere around the club after a tough 2010. But what I've seen, I've seen Warrior twice this year and uh, certainly think they're moving in the right direction and uh, just a couple more senior players and they probably would have snuck a couple of wins this year, I think. They knew, well, they made life hard for your beloved Hawks on Sunday. I, I saw you there uh, sort of sweating a little bit in that last quarter, Keith. Uh, I, was, I was sweating all day. <laughs> no worries about that. Uh, no, they, they certainly took the game right up to Drew. And as I mentioned, that couple of senior experienced players. And at the end of the day, that last 10 minutes, it was those guys. Drew had a couple, a few extra of them that really got Drew over the line. And um, the luncheon on Sunday, the CEO, um, Helen Ince, has announced some important uh, things that are happening at Warrigal. Uh, grants towards lighting. Um, and I know this has been spoken about for years, but the actual uh, oval on the other side of Tarwin Street, uh, that that would be a cricket and football training centre, but also the actual turf wicket. So, 
I would imagine that means that Wesley Park would become uh, the main football oval, uh, and take out the actual turf wicket, and then hopefully Warwick has got uh, top class facilities for cricket and for football. And I, I, you know, because the ground at the moment, apart from the centre wicket, is in excellent condition. It's only that centre bit that uh, has, uh, I don't know if it's that Merry Creek soil or whatever it is, but obviously. Cricket uh, wickets have a different maintenance to what footy is, and uh, footy overs get aerated, whereas wickets get compressed. And of course, when it rains, we get that thick black mud that you are slushing around. Yeah, here. it's funny, um, like, and it is just a thin film at the moment. Obviously, it gets a lot boggier in winter <coughs> as it gets wetter. But um, on Saturday, like, it, it looked pretty ordinary. But underfoot, it was fine. It was just that that top film that was the black stuff that was pretty, uh, pretty ordinary. <laughs>